hello guys you welcome to my channel today we are going to look at question 7 and 8 now question 7 states that a boy pulls a nail from the wall with a string tied to a nail the string is inclined at an angle 60 degree to the wall if the tension in the string is 4 newton what is the effective force used in pulling the nail we are looking for the effective force used in pulling the nail. Let's first of all draw a diagram. We are told that there is a wall. Let's say this is the wall. And there exists a nail on that wall. Let's say this is the nail. Then the boy attached a string whose tension is 4 Newton to that nail, like this. So, this is the tension for Newton. And now, this tension, the, this particular string rather, is inclined at an angle of 60 degrees to the wall. Now, what is the effective force that the boys use in pulling the, pulling the nail? It's, it's, it's something technical. If the boy apply force to this nail like this then the effective force is going to be horizontal force but if the boy is pulling the nail down like this the effective force is going to be vertical force but the boy cannot be pulling the string vertically and yet we still have the tension of that string to go in this direction so the effective force is said to be the horizontal force if that should be the case let's find the value for the force at the horizontal level. If this should be the case, we can now use what? The trig ratio by saying sine of 60 degree is opposite F over the hypotenuse, 4. If I cross multiply here, I have 4 sine 60 degree to equal F. So, F is 4 times sine 60 is the square root of 3 over 2. So 2 here, 1, 2 here is going to be 2. So F, which is the effective force, is 2 root 3 Newton. So this is going to be the value for the effective force using pulling the string. So F equal 2 root 3 Newton. Simple as that. Okay, let's go to the next question, question 8. So it's the, 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 the force system shown in the figure below has a resultant of 200 Newton pointing up along the y-axis. That is, the resultant force along the y-axis is 200 Newton. In other words, the summation of the whole Y component of this system is 200 Newton. Now, compute the value of F and theta required to give this result. That is, we should find the value of X and the value of theta that will make what? The resultant force along the vertical component to be 200 Newton. How do we go about that? Let's quickly look at the solution to that. Okay, the first thing is that we should understand that the algebraic sum of the whole forces along the horizontal component is going to be zero and the algebraic sum of the whole forces along the vertical component is going to be 200 Newton. Okay, if that should be the case, let's resolute this vector now. Okay, the vertical component of the O forces there, we are going to have that. For the vertical component, ROI is going to be F sine of theta. And the vertical component of this is going to be minus 240 sine of 30 degree I think that's all now listen this one is positive because it's pointing towards the vertical direction 
And this one is negative because it's pointing towards the negative axis of Y. So, let us now look at the horizontal forces. The horizontal component of this is said to be half cos of theta. It will be positive because it falls to the positive axis. Plus, this one will also be positive. That will be 240 cos of 30. But there is a force along the horizontal already, which is what? 500 Newton. That's minus 500 Newton. You know, it falls to the negative axis of X. Kindly watch the video on vector and scalar as it is in the description box below. So you get to understand how we come about this very well. Okay, if this should be the case, we know that the summation of all this is going to be 200. So we have 200 Newton to equal F sine of theta. This is 240 sine 30. The average of 240 is going to be 120. So we have minus 120 because this is going to give us 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times 240 is 120. So let's call it the like terms. So we have that F sine of theta is 200 plus 120. And that should give us 320 Newton. So from here, I can say the sine of theta is going to be 320 divided by what? Divided by F. Let's call this equation 1. And for the horizontal component, I'll have that F cos of theta then plus 240 cos 30. This should give me 120 root 3 minus 500 equal 0. So if I take the whole of this to the other side, I will have F cos of theta to equal... 500 plus, sorry, 500 minus 120 root 3. Okay, let's pause to work faster here. Let's quickly look at 120 root 3, the value we are going to have. Okay, we are going to have 207 minus 84. So if I take the difference of this, I will have f cos theta to be 500 minus 207.84. So this will give me 292.16. Okay? Now let's make uh, let's make cos theta the subject of the formula because I want to look for the value of theta. That's why I'm making everything that has to do with theta the subject. So, I will have that cos theta is 292.6 divided by F, and that is equation 2. Okay? So, if I have that to be my equation 2, I can then say, I can then say that divide, use equation 2 to divide equation 1. So, I will have sine of theta divided by cos of theta to equal 320 divided by F then divided by 292.16 divided by F. So sine theta divided by cos theta will give me tangent of theta. So 320 divided by F will be multiplied by F all over 292.16. So, F and F can take care of themselves. I will then have that tan of theta is 320 divided by 292.16. So, what will be my result for that? So, 320 divided by 292.16. So, my result is going to be 1 point. So, I have 1.095. Okay, if this is what I have, theta is arctan of 1.0953. Okay, so arctan, so theta is 
47.6 degree. Now, we've gotten the value for theta. Now, let's get the value for F. Okay? You can put it into any of the equation, either equation 1 or 2. You still have the same answer. We can say put theta in equation equation 1 to determine what? The value for F. So, I'll have sine 47.6 to equal... 320 divided by F. So F is 320 divided by sine of 47.6. Okay, so we are going to have 320 divided by the sine of 47.6. That will give us 0 0.7, 0 0.738. 0.7385 okay okay that should be the case let's take the fraction of this so f is going to be 320 divided by so we have 433.3 newton to be the value of f so we have successfully determined the value of theta to be 47.6 and the value of f to be 43 sorry 433.3 newton hence this will be the value of f and the value of theta that will make the resultant force along the y components to be 200 newton thanks for watching this video don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel kindly share this video within your friends and family thank you